took my skills as a graduate recruiter, put it all together, and this is a secret formula. Another good piece of advice that I have for you is as a recruiter, that is like not the way to do it. This is what I wrote instead in my CV. Hi guys, my name is Klaus and welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to be talking about CVs or how we call it in America, resumes and we're going to go through the basic steps and the basic how-tos of how to draft a good CV. We are also going to be talking about specifically CVs for the professional industry like banking, consulting and financial services just to give you guys a quantifiable measurement of how important it is to have a really great CV. On average, recruiters look at your CV from 6 to 8 seconds before making a decision. 6 seconds is this. That's it. That was 6 seconds. You know, someone would have already made a decision as to whether or not you were rejected or you were accepted. And I know this because I do have a background in graduate recruitment. I worked in a really large investment bank for two years as a graduate recruiter there. So my responsibility was to go through CVs and basically choose the ones that would go through and choose the ones that wouldn't go through. And I also did a lot of video interviews. So I watched a lot of video interviews and I was basically that person that would either reject you or put you through to the next step and actually video interviews was my main area of expertise so if you guys want to see a video on how to make your video interview great then let me know but in this video I'll be talking specifically about how I judge CVs and what I learned through working as a graduate recruiter in London at a large investment bank. To give you guys a little bit of background while I was working as a graduate recruiter I looked at CVs from you know just the graduate streamline so inside weeks for first year university students i also look at cvs for second year university students for those who are applying for summer internships and i looked of course at third year university students who are applying for graduate programs so if you're a student or if you're a freshly graduated uh, person <laughs> then this video is going to be very very useful to you because i have some juicy tips and i will tell them and reveal them all in this video this video will be split into two main categories so the first category is going to be all about the format, how you should format your CV, what it should visually look like and what you should include in each section. And then the second part of the video, I'm going to be talking about the content itself, how you should be writing your, your points and how to make them really stand out. And for me as a recruiter, what kind of bullet points would I like to see when judging a CV? First of all, for the formats, the basic of the basic, your CV should only be one page. If you are applying at an entry level, if you're going into your graduate program, a summer internship or an insight program in first year, it has to be one page only. This is specifically for banking, uh, also financial services and consulting. Also, when I reviewed CVs that were more than one page long, they were usually just full of BS. I'm not saying that they were bad CVs, but they could have very easily be shortened to one page. Because here's the thing, we are, you know, freshly out of you know university or we're applying to summer internships we barely have any experience so there is no reason for your cv to be two pages long if it is two pages long either you have a really 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 good cv where you've done a lot of different internships a lot of great work experiences which in that case i would give it the benefit of the doubt or you're making your points too long you are writing bullet point after bullet point after bullet point that all explain the same thing and that is where i have a problem so make sure your cv is one page all right, now let's talk about how your CV should look like in the A4 paper, okay? First of all, no photos. No profile photos, that is a thing in some countries and sometimes when people apply to the UK, they think, oh, I should also add a picture because in my home country, we add pictures. But in the UK, no photos. Also, I think in professional services, CVs with pictures should be illegal. I think any company that asks you to submit a CV, I know some countries do and I'm very against this, because in the professional services, your appearance has nothing, nothing to do with your ability to do the job. It is not like you're applying to be a model, you're not applying to be an air hostess. And having your CV there, to me, just perpetuates further implicit bias and takes us away from all the diversity and inclusion programs that we have on right now. So that's a whole rant that I'm going through, but basically, no pictures, okay? In terms of how you should structure your CV, 
the basic outline is having first your education then having your professional or work experience and then at the end having any additional information you can tailor this to your own needs so i used to have a personal uh, section at the top before i had my education just talking about my skills what my top three skills were and at the moment in my current cv i don't have that i have education i have work experience i have a place for leadership positions and then i have additional uh, information that is not leadership positions so it depends on what kind of content you want to highlight but if you are just going into this blindfolded and you don't know how to structure your cv i would recommend just do it very simple education work experience and additional information also just as a rule of thumb i wouldn't go above 12 to 15 bullet points in total for the whole cv and also i wouldn't go more than four to five bullet points underneath each role so if you have one work experience you were an intern at an x bank for the summer i wouldn't do more than four to five bullet points underneath that all right so what should be included in the education sector if you are applying for graduate roles i would only include up to a levels so i would put my a level scores and i would also just put what i got for my bachelor's degree if you have a master's degree i would not include any a level scores there i'll just put what i got for my bachelor's degree and what i got for my master's degree also of course along with education you should always write the institution where you got your qualification from this is very no-brainer i'm sure everyone knows this and you can also include different scholarships different academic achievements that you have made in those schools next we have work experience here you just include everything that you've done that is either an internship an apprenticeship summer insight program also goes underneath work experience especially if you're still applying for internships etc so for work experience i think what really catches my eye at first in those six to eight seconds is how it's structured and how succinct it is so i would like to see a cv that has the job title whatever it was have your job title then have the company name barclays hsbc goldman sachs etc then have the company description only if it's a small startup company and it's not a very well-known company if you did a summer internship at citibank you're not gonna have to tell me what it is but if you did a summer internship at a startup you're gonna have to include a small description to let the person let the recruiter know what the company is when i was looking through cvs and i saw a company that was perhaps a smaller startup that i didn't recognize i was not going to go out of my way to search up this company just for your one application i have tons and tons of applications to review so i would really recommend you to include a one-liner say it's an ed tech uh, startup focusing on xyz for example i would also include the location so some people usually have the city and the country so in my cv i have london comma uk if it was in portugal i would have algarve comma portugal uh, some people just have the country so uk portugal honestly it doesn't matter as long as it's consistent lastly in the work experience you need to include your dates so make sure you have july 2019 to september 2019 or something like that especially at a graduate level you will only have internships that were a couple months long so i would definitely include the month and the year so yeah that is how the work experience section should be structured and as a recruiter when i looked at cvs for graduate programs i genuinely thought that when it has a very clear structure it made a huge huge difference on whether i thought it was a good cv or not lastly for the additional information part if you're applying as a first year or a second year the additional information part is most likely going to be a lot longer than your work experience because you don't have any work experience yet right you're applying to get work experience so instead of writing additional information i would title it something else to make it stand out more because additional information has the connotations of something very subsidiary something very sidelined so i would probably name this section something like leadership positions or extracurricular positions. And here is where you talk about all the things you've done in societies, whether you've been a committee member of any clubs, anything you've done in high school, were you the head boy or head girl of your school? Were you valedictorian of your graduate class? I would structure it again, have the title of your position, say I was the events manager of XYZ society and underneath I would include one bullet point or maybe two 
about what I did. Also, something that I would include in this area is languages. Never forget to include all the languages that you speak. That can be very, very valuable. Something I saw very often was the Duke of Edinburgh Award. If you've done that and you reached a certain level or certain grade on that award, include it as well. Okay, moving on to the content section. So we know we need additional information. We know we need education. We know we need work experience. But what do I write underneath everything I've done to make you notice me, Clouds? What do I do? Let me tell you what you should write, okay? This is the secret formula that I learned upon reviewing hundreds and hundreds of CVs and also something I learned with career experts and sector experts at London Business School. You know, Business School is really good as well at teaching me how to write a CV. So I took those skills, took my skills as a graduate recruiter, put it all together, and this is a secret formula. Car. Vroom vroom. It is basically a shorter version of star. And if you don't know about the star method, forget about her. We're talking about cars right now. And the car method is an acronym that stands for challenge, action, results and that is how you should structure your bullet points so i'll give you guys a very understandable example okay so during my first year of university i was an intern at a food and beverage startup and i was working there as a digital marketing and sales intern on the digital marketing side i had to do a lot of engagement with brands instagram influencers and instagram accounts to make sure our product was out there and people understood and people were aware that we existed and to emulate that on my cv i could have just written collaborated and reached out to different bloggers to sponsor our products and that would be it and yes that's what i did but that sounds so boring the way you should write it is have your challenge make it seem like there is something you want to solve what you did exactly and most importantly write the results of what your actions were so taking our example yes i reached out to different influencers and asked them to feature our products but what did that do was that even useful to the business did it even increase sales did it do anything at all i don't know that as a recruiter so you have to tell me exactly the value that your work uh, did so this is what i wrote instead in my cv Initiated pilot pay-per-click marketing strategy using Google Analytics through a streamline of online ambassadors, boosting Instagram follower account from 2.9K to 4.8K. So let me break this down. What was the challenge here? The challenge is increasing the marketing strategy, right? Then we have the action, which was uh, using Google Analytics through a streamline of online brand ambassadors. Then we have our result, which is boosted Instagram follower account from 2.9K to 4.8K. And that is a very succinct structure. I understand what you did, why you did it, and what it led to. The car structure does not have to actually be in the car order. You can first talk about your action, then your challenge, and then your results. Or very oftentimes you can talk about your result first, then your action, and then your challenge. It doesn't matter which order you do it, as long as you have those three points well outlined. Another good piece of advice that I have for you is as a recruiter, I'm usually looking for certain competencies that fit the job role that I have open. So this is what I would suggest. Before writing a bullet point, think about what do I want to showcase in this bullet point? What is the specific competency or the specific skill that I want to emphasize? Is it leadership? Is it teamwork? Is it organizational skills? Is it attention to detail? Once you know that, then you start writing your bullet point. Because if you don't, you'll aimlessly start writing and it might mean you are a good team player, it might mean you have good leadership skills, but it's not obvious because you didn't write it with the purpose of explaining that. When I say that, I don't mean I portray leadership skills by doing X, Y, Z. That is like not the way to do it. You need to subtly, but at the same time, obviously indicate a specific competency. Now, let me give you guys an example. Here I am talking about one of my internships where I was working in sales. And when writing this point, I wanted to showcase my communication skills and my ability to communicate with clients. Something that I wanted my CV to have because it's very, very important for consulting applications, right? So this is what I wrote. Managed own client portfolio was communicating in six different languages and pitched a POS opportunity to senior manager, driving increase of sales of 8% in Hong Kong. So 
that in itself really emphasizes on communication, being able to build client relationships. And no, I didn't write, I built client relationships for doing X, Y, Z because that is too blatant. But if you are able to include those keywords like enabled client portfolio, communicating, pitched, those words are able to depict the specific competency that you want to emphasize on. So now you might be thinking, but Clouds, there's so many competencies out there that might be relevant to the job. What do I emphasize on? And this is where research comes in, okay, my friend? You go to the specific industry that you want, you research, and you then you make a list out of all the skills that are most important in that industry, okay? And usually when you're applying for job roles, it's very, very specifically outlined what skills the company is looking for. So. Honestly, it's, it's very easy to find what competencies to focus on when writing these bullet points. So yeah, that wraps up my first CV introduction, how to write a CV 101 video. There is so much more that I can talk about, especially, you know, as a recruiter, there are so many stories of different CVs that I've seen that were so good and different CVs that I've seen that were not so good. And I'd love to share those stories with you guys. I feel like this is just, you know, the first video out of many CV videos that are coming to this channel. But yes, this is a good 101 basics video if you guys don't really know how to write a CV or if you guys are panicking and you're just starting to apply to things and you just want to know what do I do? How do I write a CV? This is how you do it. And yeah, hopefully this was useful. Hopefully this was insightful and let me know what other videos you guys would like to see me do next. Please do give it a big subscribe. It would really help me out so much and I'll be so happy if you subscribed and give it a big like button as well. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. -bye. <laughs>